Great. So uh, Jonathan is a PhD student in electrical engineering here at the University of Delaware. You're the one that made the circuit design, right? Yep. That runs an organic LED, or am I making that up? Just an LED. Just an LED. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we're looking forward to your talk. Okay. Okay, so I'm Jonathan Dickinson. I'm a PhD student here at Delaware, uh, and I'm an electrical engineer. I titled this Discovering Art in the Necessities of Everyday Life. So the question is, how does an engineer find art in his everyday work? Well, you gotta understand engineers. Engineers are not smart like scientists. Uh, you can think of it this way, a scientist uh, wants to study the universe and understand it and learn more about nature and all that. And, and an engineer starts out the same way, but what happens is uh, he reaches a certain point, he gets lazy and says, well, I think I know enough to get a job. <laughs> so that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, so because of this, they have to find ways to make themselves feel special. And as everybody knows, the best way to make yourself feel special is to take what you do every day, no matter how boring it is, and say, you know what? This is art. So how do engineers find art in their menial work? <laughs> two ways, two mechanisms. One is existentialism. <laughs> everyone, everyone needs to feel like what they do is important and the things they make and the decisions they make have an impact on the universe, even though they don't. <laughs> so it's very easy for people to play tricks on themselves because they live their whole lives only seeing the world through their own perception. It's very easy to trick themselves into thinking they're the center of the universe and what they do is important. So the second mechanism for finding art in science and engineering is effort justification. The more a human invests in energy and effort and time into something, the more likely they are to think it is good. Because if it was not good, they would have wasted their time. So in this way, the longer someone works on a design or a problem, the more likely they are to think it's good. And furthermore, at some point, the more likely they are to find art in it. So what was my problem? Well, I work on a SLEDS project in my uh, research group. And what this does is it basically uh, builds an infrared LED scene projector. And this is for uh, military testing groups that want to calibrate their infrared cameras uh, using a known infrared source. And that's what this is. And it's kind of like a TV. It can display scenes that are realistic. And the whole point is that eventually, uh, they'll be able to test all their systems like if they were looking out on the battlefield or something. All right, so the way we do this, oh, and the reason we, we do uh, IR LED technology is compared to the, the last technology, it's higher temperature, higher speed, and it gets higher resolution. Uh, so here's a picture of our system. In the top right here, you can see the chip. And this is where the screen is. It's very small, but it emits infrared light and so you see the green printed circuit board around the outside of it. Uh, that delivers all of the signal and power to the chip to make it work over wire bonds that are all along the edge of the chip there. Uh, once we do this, we mount it in a cryostat doer because the LEDs perform much better at low temperatures. And then we uh, connect it to our electronics all through the printed circuit board that goes around the chip. And in the bottom right there, you can see it in operation. That's with the infrared camera, how it looks uh, lighting up a grid. So uh, what I was tasked to do is for the next generation, we need a large uh, printed circuit board that's gonna go around the outside here and uh, basically route even more signals because the next generation is gonna have a lot more lines going into it. So anyways, it was just the next generation. So what I used 
was uh, a company called Advanced Circuits, and they are a uh, printed circuit board manufacturer, and they offer a free software called PCB Artist, aptly named. And uh, what you can do is you can design your printed circuit board in there, and basically uh, you give them the design and they make it for you. And it, uh, it's actually the best software ever created. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. One more thing. Here in the bottom right, you can see the software. And basically, uh. Oh, yeah. Use this. So, yeah, basically, this is about halfway through my design. And uh, what you can see is, uh, well, what I want to tell you about this is I didn't actually make any artistic decisions, everything I did was out of necessity because we're actually pushing the limits of uh, advanced circuits uh, manufacturing capabilities, as well as pushing the limits uh, for the company that was gonna have to wire bond all around there. So uh, basically, all this was done out of necessity, and I didn't make any decision for the purpose of art, but eventually I began to see that it was beautiful. <laughs> and so I present to you the holy mecca. <laughs> This is a top-down view of the software screen capture. Uh, eight layer, it's an eight-layer printed circuit board. So each color represents a different metal layer. Or these small lines going around, they're, uh, they're just copper wires carrying powers and signal to, uh, to the chip from the outside. They come in on these, uh, these outside bars here. They're contacts to the outside on all four sides there. And then they travel through around, and the, the interesting thing is, each signal needs to reach all four corners of the chip. So you have these huge buses of uh, parallel copper wires going around the board, all through the different layers. And since I saw it was like a bunch of you know wires circling this empty box in the middle, I decided to name it the Holy Mecca. <laughs> So in conclusion, engineers, like their work, tend to be small parts of a larger system. They use tools, but they are tools themselves as well. Because of this, they identify with their work and fall in love with it. And this is important because sometimes engineers lack social skills. By the way, this is the fabricated holy mecca. I'd like to thank uh, Miguel Hernandez for recommending I submit my work here, as well as the rest of the Seaboard Research Group, specifically Josh Marks for teaching me PCB artists, and Garrett Isaac for Azoc, my bad, for uh, helping a lot with the design. Uh, I'd like to thank Fuad Kiamalev and PEO Stry for funding the project, and uh, Joey Pavlika and the entire team at Advanced Circuits as well. Uh, any questions? Any questions at all? Yeah, I love about really Yeah, about what was that? Uh, the sensor. One point three inches. Well, yeah, the emitter is one point three inches per side. So at the beginning, you talked about the two motivation factors for finding art in your work. Yes. Uh, which one of those drives are you finding art in your book? Both, of course. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I, I really like that perspective. Because you do. You spend so much time in your work, right? You yeah. have to find it interesting, or if you don't, it's bad news bears, right? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? No? All right. Thank you very much.